Welcome to the Drive Time News Blast. 30 minutes, 45 for patrons of news of the day from a perspective of truth, liberty, and justice. This is Monica Perez. Brad Binkley cannot be with us today, but we'll be back on Monday. We look forward to that. In the meantime, we welcome our guest host filling in for Brad, our friend Cam Harless from the Mad Ones podcast. Welcome, Cam, and thank you for your help this week. You are welcome. I am enjoying myself. Well, I'm enjoying it too, and it is fun to have a little uh, change of pace, a challenge. It's keeping me on my toes. I'm giving <laughs> you that. Uh, and I'm still, today is Share the Show Tuesday. So Binkley and I like to make sure that on Tuesday, we lay out at the beginning of the show what we're doing, why we're here, why you would want to share this show. So last week I had, I many people told me that last week I really nailed it. I usually do it off the cuff, but <laughs> let me just tell you what I said last week. And then listeners who have somebody they can share it with, this is, this is how it will go. We encourage our regular listeners on Share the Show Tuesday to find someone they think is ready to wade back into the news of the day. Maybe somebody who's taken a news break for a while, who's sick of the propaganda, or who you think it's, is ready to wake up and take the scales off their eyes. What we do is look at the top stories of the day and try to understand why we're hearing them. We don't think that all news is fake. It's just that any news that makes it into the mainstream media is there for a reason. And the reason isn't what you, they tell you the reason is. That's their agenda. What we like to do is pull back the agenda, pull back the propaganda, and tell you the reality of why that story is in the news. Because it does matter why they're putting it in there, and that's what you should be aware of. So even if you just want to drop out of society and grow your chickens or whatever, we don't blame you. That's our hope, too. But in the meanwhile, if you have a job or have teenagers or live with your mother-in-law, you're going to have these conversations about stuff that's being fed to these people through the propaganda machine. And you're going to want to know what's really going on. Maybe educate them. Maybe help bring a little harmony to your household as you get people to recognize the truth a little bit, or at least for them to better understand why some of this stuff bothers you that they think, well, that maybe the powers that be have the best of intentions. Maybe it's time to dig a little deeper. That's what we're here for. So our feed is called The Propaganda Report. It's on your favorite podcasting platform. This show is The Daily News, and it's called The Drive Time News Blast. You'll see it uh, called The DNB in The Propaganda Report feed. So thank you, and please share the show. But if you don't have someone to share the show with, or you haven't identified, just go on to your favorite podcasting platform, and give us a five-star review. If you give us a five-star review for as long as we're on those platforms, it will help the search engine boost our show as being recommended to people who might be open to it. And we have gotten a lot of listeners that way. So that is not a wasted effort. And with that, many, many thanks. And let's get on to the first story of the day, which is, <laughs> you ready, Cam? I am so ready. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to rely heavily on you because <laughs> this is something I wish I understood a little better. I don't. Um, and, but someone who does one of my favorite listeners, a real, like he's a financial and intellectual guru for me here on the show, sent me an email and he was like right ahead of what the mainstream media was going to start kicking out. So I'm going to read his quote. It's the story is Bitcoin was retrieved by the feds and returned to the colonial pipeline after they paid it out to hackers as ransomware. So what my friend Byron says is, when you look, uh, this is kind of a, a long one. It's You got to wrap your brain around it. You will be able to. He says, when you look at the definition of currency that includes store of wealth, media of exchange, standard of value, cryptos fail the definition, except for if the medium of exchange includes illicit activities. So his argument is that as soon as the Fed can get that, can get that money back from criminals, mm -hmm. the, the value of Bitcoin should plummet. This was before it actually did. He sent me this email because the actual best thing about it, the thing that makes it a uniquely valuable thing is this privacy and security element. He said, otherwise, it's just an unreliable proxy for fiat currency, like having a Cheerios to dollars exchange rate. You should be able to understand that with five little kids. The point being the bad guys don't demand crypto because of some innate preference for it as a currency. They demand it because they believe their illicit activities are less traceable, detectable, or seizable. So if the bad guys are wrong 
and about the vulnerability of crypto, then the major appeal of crypto has been eliminated. If the bad guys are right, then the feds are not telling the truth about being able to seize that money back mm -hmm. from the hackers. And maybe they, they're not even telling the truth about whether there was a hack in the first place. Byron sees a rabbit hole there. And I know you do too. Tell me what your feelings are here. Well, I am by no means a crypto expert, but I, I swim in circles with people who, one of, my, one of my friends, Ryan, is actually creating software that makes crypto easier to run for anyone who wants to use it. Like that's like his, that's like his dream is to work in crypto. And so that is when, this, when this story came up, I was like, Hey, what is this? What's going on? Because it smells fishy to me. Um, and so today they came out this, with the story that the FBI found the crypto wallet that the hackers used to collect the ransom from colonial pipeline. And they recovered the funds and gave it back to colonial pipeline. My question was, how did they get this private key? Because this is allegedly, they call it dark side is the name of the hacker, hackers. And these are allegedly professional hackers. And somehow the federal government, the FBI in particular, got their private key. If I was a hacker, the last thing that I would do would be to keep my private key anywhere that the government could get it. So that would mean on the cloud. That would mean in a USB drive, anything that they could take and then look into. So... When I hear that, my first thought is no one just stumbles upon a private key. And if these guys are sophisticated enough to tap into something of such tremendous value, I mean, big energy like this or energy distribution networks and stuff that are practically monopolies in their region, are, are they have redundancies in place. So, so for hackers to really be that much of a threat to these guys, they have to be massively sophisticated. Right. And so them, the, the FBI just being able to find the key to the wallet, allegedly someone said on their own computers, makes me think that maybe the FBI is screwing with the supply chain more than people or the feds in general are messing with the supply chain a little bit more. What do you mean? Like the, well, the colonial supply chain or the Bitcoin supply chain? Well, I think that this is there's a double edged sword in this story. I think for one you see, there's also was recently a ransomware attack on the meat industry, like the largest meat packer in America. There was a ransomware attack. I don't know if it was the same hackers, but it's just between that, between the shortage, uh, some of the supply chain stuff with the shortage in um, like chips right now, bullets, like there's a lot of different things that are very short right now that it stinks, Monica. I don't yes, know if it stinks I, to you as much as it does I, to me. Yes, and I actually want to get into the supply chain issue, touch on that in the last big story of the Free 30. Now, so yes, there's definitely supply chain issues. I identified that as a big part of that colonial story. The Bitcoin thing, I, I've read before that when they do a big PSYOP or a false flag, they like to multitask. They like a few things. And we all know that Bitcoin has been big in the news, highly manipulated. Elon Musk manipulates it. So, Donald so Trump just tried to. Yes. So let's let's just spend a moment talking about Something you uncovered a week before the colonial attack was what? So there is, with the Institute for Security and Technology, a week before the colonial pipeline attack on April 29th, they put out the um, this report, the anti-ransomware report, uh, which one of the funny things about this was that it was literally seven days before the colonial pipeline attack, and that timing is a little too coincidental, in my opinion, especially since on about page 14 of that report, they start talking about cryptocurrency and about the ones that are regulated, the ones that aren't, and how it needs to be regulated. Hmm. And so I'm reading this and I'm going, this happened a week before, and now they happen to find the key. Okay. So let's get into that for a second, because that's a whole nother topic. And first of all, I just want to say this Institute for Security and Technology, I've looked into who they are and you'll see like their founders, they, they don't claim to be a, a, the satellite of any one organization, but I had to actually invent an expression <laughs> for who founded them. It is founded by Deep Tech. 
deep tech. Brookings is there. Facebook, DARPA, big media, Hoover. Like you could go to the about page on Institute for Security and Technology or our founders and allies. Oh, this is what they say. They call them allies. allies. Anyway, their allies are deep tech AF. Yeah. So, so yes, now we get into where they really are looking for regulation. I've seen this thing happen where you've got China introduced a digi yuan. Mm -hmm. Then that was like a week or two ago that became public or maybe even a month ago. Then yesterday they said, we are going to stop supporting private crypto. We we are going to ban it. We're not going to allow our banks to do it. Now, yeah, you can they really physically stop you go in and steal your, we don't know. I, you know, they say you're not, you can't, but what the hell happened here with the colonial? So here's China digitizing it and banning the private stuff, but still being a digital currency, not with the same good features as Bitcoin, whatever. Then on the flip side, you have El Salvador and other mm -hmm. Latin countries saying they want to use Bitcoin as their currency. Like they're not sophisticated enough maybe to unroll their own digital coin, but they want just like China to get away from the US. And this all makes two points to me. One is the Chinese first mover thing is the perfect talking point. It's like why, why the Britain said they use chemical weapons in World War I. Because the other guy is doing it. We wouldn't do it, but the other guys are. So we need our digi dollars out there as soon as we can. Then you have the idea of the public digital thing, the private digital thing, and then you have the convergence of where I think Bitcoin will be basically absorbed by the digi dollar. I think that's where we're going. And to regulate is to destroy. So if they are going to, or to tax is to destroy, to regulate is to destroy, if they're going to start regulating Bitcoin, it, it might as well be, I've always felt it would be a stepping stone to a cashless society. And I feel like this is part of it. And when you have Trump or Musk talking about it, the way they have been, that seems right too. D tell me that. Well, yeah, that, that and that was another one of those things that's like this timing is strange because Trump today or yesterday got on and started talking about how he thinks Bitcoin is a scam against the dollar that needs to be very highly regulated. He said, I don't like it. It's because it's another currency competing against the dollar. I want the dollar to be the currency of the world. So Trump is taking this point and going against Bitcoin and against crypto to like the common man. I feel like that's what that approach is, is he's Absolutely. they're going after people on the right, people who may not know everything, but want them to be against it. And, and then on the he has a cult of personality. He can. I mean, this is a sophisticated problem. I don't understand it. And right? I mean, I've tried like a little bit more than your average person. I don't understand it really. And they so they use the cult of personality to get people on board of stuff that they just don't even try to make a critical argument about. Right. And then you, on the other end, you have Elon Musk, who gets on there, who has been a big crypto guy. He's still a part of Dogecoin, allegedly. But he goes out and says, you know, Tesla is no longer going to accept Bitcoin. We're no longer going to be on the Bitcoin bus. And why? Left talking point, because it's destroying the environment and climate change. And he goes, also, uh, carbon tax needs to happen now. Wow. Well, that's another cult of personality situation, that guy. And I remember when, and didn't, wasn't Tesla taking Bitcoin briefly or only Dogecoin? Didn't he say you could buy a Tesla with Bitcoin? Yeah, I, I, at this point, he, they're trying to disconnect from it entirely because right. okay. carbon Okay, so Gates, actually, I brought that story a, a month or two ago or more. Gates said that, and then at the same time or very shortly thereafter, Microsoft unfolded or patented a uh, a coin that you could earn. I know you can earn Bitcoin, I think, by playing like Fallout or something. I can't remember, but like <laughs> the, there's stuff you can do that you can earn it. Yeah. And the idea is that your work, you are doing stuff on your computer like they – they act like that energy can be converted into some a store of value and they call it a coin. That's going to be a Microsoft thing. And, and I guess that that gives you the impression, I think, that there's there's real energy um, uh, conservation there. But I don't think there is. But in any case, I always knew Musk. The first suspicion I had about Musk, obviously now I have nothing but suspicion about him. But the first right. one was when he said, the only thing I think should be regulated is A.I., 
the government needs to have control over AI. That oh, was the, God. it was a long time ago. And I was like, huh? It's like, that, that's the worst idea ever. Like, you know, rise of the machines, Robocop, like what? And that was his silver bullet. That's what he used it for. And then at the same time, I think, what were you saying that the senators are on crypto now too? Oh yeah. So uh, allegedly there are many senators and I, I, I couldn't find the names. They weren't any more specific than many senators are talking about banning crypto. I and think they had a financial committee meeting over the weekend. Or bunch of nerds. Yes. Bunch of nerds. Um, but one of the things that I wanted to point out is uh, the acting U.S. Attorney General for Northern California. She she quoted she had a quote in this article that I read in Bloomberg, where she said new financial technologies that attempt to anonymize payments will not will not provide a curtain from behind which criminals will be permitted to pick the pockets of hardworking Americans. And. <laughs> And this is the thing yep. with crypto and with anytime you have a conversation with anyone about the, the concept of anarchy and anarchism, it's always arguments that are just the status quo. So like you're talking to someone about anarchy, they're like, well, you know, anarchy would eventually become a government or eventually there'd be people being shot in the streets. I'm like, have you seen our streets? You think this that's not happening right now? I had the exact same reaction the other day. I was listening to an interview between Shane Hazel and a, and a guy who wanted to debate him. And he said, and that's what the guy said. He said that I don't care. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like the whole point is that you have self-defense. You're much less vulnerable if you don't have this evil overlord taking away your means of self-defense than if you just simply had a state of nature where you could defend yourself. And similarly, fiat money is a monopoly on counterfeiting. It's unconstitutional, even these right. greenbacks that we have. So who's hijacking the system and who's trying to protect it? Although I do think that Bitcoin is a stepping stones of cashless society that will be controlled by the same powers that control fiat. But the only thing that, well, I think that that's the beauty of cryptocurrency is that is how much it scares the government. And so when they use this argument that Bitcoin or um, crypto will anonymize payments that will provide a curtain for criminals, that's describing cash. That is what you can do with cash. Cash is the number one kind of well, currency used by criminals to stay anonymous. That's what they're, but I mean, they're after they're, cash for that reason too. Well, they're, they're worried about competition. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> but they'll get rid of all of it. And like one of the big things about the Chinese Digi Yuan is that it's going to provide total surveillance. And of course, ultimately, it allows for negative interest rates, like a, a deterioration of the money supply. But let's move on to the, the, Capital riot probe report that came out today. Uh, the Wall Street Journal headline says Capital riot probe by Senate faults intelligence security failures in January 6th breach. Bipartisan report, re report recommends making it easier for the Capitol Police chief to request National Guard assistance, among other actions. So I went in and I looked at, I read, of course, the article of the Wall Street Journal, but I also went and looked at the 110 or 20 page recommendations or report and just zip down to the end uh, where the recommendations were, because that's really what your policy objectives are yeah. for, especially something like this, which is totally misrepresented what really happened in the media and, po and the politics and everything. They're totally misrepresenting what really happened. And because of that, you, what they do is they construct the story to tee up the policy objectives that they would not otherwise be able to achieve. So you, just right. looking at the policy objectives, you have to disconnect them from being a response, logical or illogical, to the problem. There is, they, So when I looked at these policy recommendations, they were actually extremely detailed. I expected it to be entirely about surveillance and coordinating information, which is kind of sketchy uh, legally, federally. And I noticed that Eric Holder really had started reporting on this immediately, really led the charge against what was enshrined in the 1974 Privacy Act, which was that you couldn't really uh, share information vertically or horizontally about citizens among you know, vertical and horizontal governments. 
So every ever so like Sandy Hook, you would have thought it was all about gun control. But if you look at the executive orders, it was mostly about information. And yeah. this, I thought it was going to be mostly about information, but so much of it weirdly was about specifics of giving autonomy, greater armaments, um, more easily accessible, better defense, offensive and defensive weapons for cap the Capitol Police. And I looked at that, and again, I was talking to Shane Hazel yesterday, which is an uh, interview that's going to come out on our Propaganda Report feed on Friday. And he, he, I had heard, I was doing some research on him, listening to a lot of the things that he was saying. And one of the things he said, he was a Marine in the Middle East after 9-11, and he said, when you have, you, when you have the military occupying your capital, that's your shithole country. <laughs> you know, yeah. that is what it is. And, and as I read this, and I thought when I saw all the, Walls go up around D.C. and the National Guard stay there till May 23rd, even though all the selfie stick toting middle aged retiree insurrectionists went home on their buses at sunset like they had <laughs> planned originally. And then even the, the uh, ancient turtle hobbled back into the Senate to steal the <laughs> election for Trump over Biden. Even even after all of that, I was like, there is something weird about these guys being in the Capitol I have to wonder if, because this whole Q thing was about an, a military coup. I, I don't know if you realize this, that like Trump was the president, but he was surrounded by enemies, but the military was going to do a coup to actually support <laughs> the elected president who is in place, but to get rid of all the other guys. But now you have that, that legitimate president, you know, I'm just talking about the Q point of view Yeah. that now you have Biden in there who is part of that illegitimate deep state elected illegitimately. Maybe you're still going to get the military coup. Maybe you're actually going to not even necessarily get people on board with it, get the Q people or the Patriots or whatever on board with it, but at least the media will have an argument, a talking point for their, the narrative that they spin out, that this is, that there is a reason for this, for this coup that the right could get behind, but maybe it's a real, it's a real coup. Maybe it's a post-constitutional globalist kind of coup. But my thought is they did that January 6th was a dry run to get senators to hide under their chairs and to lock it all down, you know, and then they've got all this military there. And now you have the Capitol Police, which is becoming totally autonomous. And they are responsible for the safety of the legislators and their families, even outside the four corners of D.C. And I feel like, you know, just like Ron Paul said, walls can keep you in. <laughs> you don't necessarily want to surround yeah. your country by a wall. I feel like that's true literally for D.C. and its wall. And I and and I'd already started suspecting that. And as I read this report, and its recommendations, um, I'm going to say, I don't think that I, that seems like a, you know, a logical explanation for all of this. Well, I don't know if there is a, like in, when you're telling me about this, there's that, I don't know if there's a story or a fairy tale that I can't remember the specifics of, but the government and the way that you're talking about how they're offering this answer to the problem of January 6th, it, it rings of like a witch that would sell you a poison, a poisonous apple just so that they could also sell you the antidote later. It's that th here, here's a problem. I created it. It's not real, but here's our solution, which is sweeping gun confiscation <laughs> or yes. giving guns to bad guys or whatever. Absolutely. And that's funny because there was a story I didn't hit that was about it just broke today about internet outages hitting major websites it says hour-long disruption affected sites including the new york times the uk government uh it was because the cloud services provider fastly reported um an internal problem and uh it, and so in that article I was reading, I think that was in the journal, it says this incident highlights the reliance of many of the world's biggest websites on content delivery networks, such as Fastly. Uh, web out outages have traced back to breaks in other parts of the digital supply chain, including a 2016 cyber attack against Dyn, a service that acts as a virtual directory for internet addresses, which took down hundreds of websites. So when, and my argument is only whenever I'm told that a story in the news highlights a problem, I'm waiting for tomorrow's news to tell me what the solution is. And in yeah. your case, when you looked at the colonial ransomware thing, you looked at yesterday's news to find out what the solution was yeah. in that ransomware study. 
So I am waiting to hear that. I assume it's just more cyber backdoor that, you know, and I always, I always want to talk to John McAfee about this. Like they kept putting <laughs> those viruses in and everything. And you'd think that the government would be the one who would have to secure it, but he just swooped in and he's like, fix the problem. And they're like, oh yeah. crap, you know, <laughs> we didn't want you to fix the problem. So now I'm waiting for him to come in and fix the cyber problem. I guess that's why they have him literally locked in a prison in Spain, but he's probably still fixing the problem. Yeah, he's doing it from that butt phone that he tweets from. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's in his butt. Is that what that story he is? Has, he has to hold it in there until they go away so he can tweet. Is that a joke? or It's a joke. That... I don't... He has some well, kind of phone in it's there. It's a joke. Yeah, all right, all right. Okay. Either, either Janice is tweeting for him or he has some hidden phone in the prison because I he's tweeting. But I assume it's Janice. The lovely Janice. <laughs> because every everything I've ever heard about her is that she's lovely. I heard that from your girls, the Voluntary Vixens, your affiliated yeah. podcast that Janice is truly lovely. And I I, I assume by your silence, you're, you're agreeing. Yeah, oh, definitely. Well, okay. she was very lovely when I was talking to her about oh. talking to John McAfee. So, oh, I mean, I, I kind of want to just talk to her. OK, so before we get to the last big story of the Free 30, which will be Joe Biden to the rescue. Government will solve a problem. Government created. I'm sure this could be one of thousands of things, but it's going to have to do with the supply chain, as we were discussing yeah. earlier. But before we get to that, I want to give you a little preview of what you'll hear in the patron 15. Is Google's head of diversity an anti-Semite? And is Pharrell taking charge of an education program that undermines the people he claims to want to help? That's all in the patron 15. And of course, a big thanks to the sponsor of today's show. This is a product that actually Binkley texted me last night. I got to get one of those things. It is this. I got to get one too. Berna Technologies. They are a leader in the non-lethal self-defense category. Their live safe motto is to provide consumers with an affordable device, the Berna HD. It's $359. And but listen, that might might sound a little steep, but listen to what it does. It allows you to protect your personal safety without having to take a life. The Berna HD is not a firearm, but is an incredibly powerful and effective self-defense device that uses pepper, pepper plus gas, and kinetic or hard plastic projectiles that will subdue an assailant for up to 20 minutes, giving the user enough time to escape. With an effective range of 66 feet, the Berna HD is more effective than pepper spray or stun guns that have an effective range of only 10 feet or less. Currently adopted by law enforcement and private security firms across the U.S. to de-escalate stressful situations before having to resort to lethal means. This is the trend for sure. And why not? Over 50,000 customers across the country have chosen the Berna HD as their self-defense option. Even Sean Hannity is a customer, and without being paid for it, bought one and describes his experience as an owner on his show. He's been telling people, quote, I recently purchased, purchased the Berna HD. You hit somebody with it, and it instantly stops them, but doesn't kill them. The website is Berna, B-Y-R-N-A dot com and if you use the promo code propaganda 10 all caps propaganda all caps 10 receive a 10 percent discount on purchase it can't be combined with any other special offers or bundles but still that's not too shabby so if you love this show and you want to support us please support our sponsors including burna.com b-y-r-n-a.com and you could also support us directly by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash propaganda report the minimum uh, level there is the truth sponge, which gets you all the free content. doesn't give you the parties and live streams, but not everybody is into that or has the time for that. But the patron 15, it will get you and early releases, interviews, patron only Q and a, you can participate that in that and asking the questions and listening to it. And, uh, but if you want more, if you do want that, the cocktail parties and all that live streaming stuff, the fun stuff where we get together and let our hair down and, um, just as a nice outlet and a way to form community, maybe you want one of the higher level tiers. And that way you can get the first Friday disappearing patron parties, VIP disappearing patron parties. You have uh, 
patron saint zoom parties where we pick a subject matter and just get patron saints for available 20 25 people to just dish for hours and also of course for patron saints live on air shout outs which are really a highlight of the show and when i we suspended them for a while and due to popular demand of the listeners they came back so we love our shout outs and with that on to the last story of the free 30 which is this is the the headline Biden reveals plan to solve crippling shortages of computer chips batteries and medicine and this is his the the three bullets that lay out the story the US economy has been hit with crippling supply shortages and Biden has a plan the efforts aim to address immediate supply chain problems and bolster domestic production. The U.S. will also look to shift its international supply chain priorities from competitors to allies. Whose plan does that sound like to you? Does that sound familiar to you, The Cam? devil's? Is it the devil? Well, some people <laughs> think that because it was the orange man's plan. <laughs> if you will recall correctly... The orange man was like, China bad. We need to make stuff here. We need to have manufacturing here. We need to shut down and control our trade relationships. We need to stick with friends, not enemies, et cetera, et cetera. Right? Am I wrong? Yeah. Well, look at look at how many of the current Biden team, you know, the Biden-Harris administration, the way they're doing things, it's all just doing Trump stuff quietly. Like – Kamala went down to Guatemala and told him not to come up here. It's it's a continuation in ways that are extremely clear if you're paying attention. Well, that was the thing with Trump in the first place. When he talked about this trade stuff, when he talks about bringing manufacturing here, this was a, a big change because the marginal productivity of labor is much, much higher with things like tech, mm -hmm. with service, with the stuff that we do, which is why we have a much higher standard of living. You want to bring manufacturing back. What you're talking about is lowering our standard of living. That's just what that would do because we actually have the education and the and the population to use higher technology, higher machines, uh, and mingle our labor with them to get a, a product that is of higher marginal value, that it's not a commodity. And that's what we were doing. Now it looks like we're going in the other direction, which to me is like a de facto deindustrialization, which could be a throwback all the way to when David Rockefeller said decades ago, I think it was David, said that we need to converge east and west, but we're not going to be able to do that while I always think of it as a transmission in a car, the wheels and the engine. You're not, it, you're not, it's not going to be able to go together if the wheels are going much, much faster than the engine or the engine's going much, much faster than the wheels. So you have to slow down the west and pump up the east, which he did in order to have a kind of modular fit together world that can be easily governed from above. And that in turn probably goes with how they're making everything regular. They're regulating everything. That's what the great Rosa Quar it drilled into my mind, um, the late great, I will say, sadly, that so, so as they make us more plugged in, more surveillable, all of that, they can monitor and control us. That's why they like all the laws to be in lockstep. That's why they don't want little regions having their own architecture even or culture or um legal tradition because they want to be able to just uh cascade down all these regulations so that they can really keep an eye on everybody that's my feeling well in with the supply chain the things that have have been taken out within the last year year and a half have all been things that really affect white men i don't know if <laughs> I don't mean to be, you know, identitarian or anything like that, but you're, yeah. they've taken out the I call meat. that the, uh, the suicide demographic. <laughs> yeah. Seven no out kidding. of 10 all of suicides are white men. Well, it's like all of these things that they're talking about one chips, because that's why you can't get a new PlayStation five or an Xbox, <laughs> whatever. You can't um, get your muscle cars, right? You can't, you can't get your, your, um, your meat. Your, they took out the meat. <laughs> meat. Wow. Um, the, there was a huge slowdown in the um, the production of bullets this last year, which I don't know. I've never spent so much on bullets in my life, Monica. And all of these things are trying to get us to want the government to fix them. And I don't like it and I won't fall for it. 
I'll just wow. pay the money for the bullets. I have not made that connection that it's all stuff that you guys like. How's motorcycles? I, I, I haven't. I think we're okay, except for the <laughs> gas shortage, of course. But <laughs> it touches it touches all the things. Anything that blue eyed people prefer. Like I'm just trying to. I'm is, trying there, to figure. is there like dark sunglass regulations coming or something? <laughs> oh yeah, sunscreen. Sunscreen is going to be right out. Hey, you know they are saying now like you want more vitamin D. So they're going to take away your sunscreen, maybe, and yep. then you'll you'll really be at the mercy of that sun. You'll I'm going to look so good out. though. I'm hmm? going to look so good. You're going to look nice good and with tan. Beet red. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I burn you one time. <laughs> I burn one time, and then it's all tan from there. <laughs> that ruddy complexion, maybe that. Mostly, I see you drinking whiskey, but whatever. <laughs> so okay, uh, now I think it is. Uh, I do. I do believe. So my point about this being a problem that the government created and that the government, you know, this supply chain issue is this awful, unsupportable COVID lockdown policy, which, again, just uh, blanketed the country and the world in lockstep straight out of a Rockefeller Foundation document. So to me, I look at this and I don't think the supply chain problem was a response to the lockdown, which was a response to COVID. I'm like, Whatever they're doing now, bringing manufacturing back, this trade stuff, this is all stuff Trump was already doing. And he was doing it because it was part of the bigger plan. And they are using COVID for, or created COVID or whatever for, for to, they're, they're multitaskers. They want yeah. to, to affect a lot of different things and they are doing it now. So with that, let's continue on some of the hot topics that we have prepared for today in the patron 15 first i would like to thank some patrons and give a shout out i would very much like to thank a few new patrons for joining the effort cam not this cam different cam uh joel barbara thank you so much for being part of the solution i guess not trying to rip off dave smith but we are he's part of the solution too i think despite the name of his show I thought that was Maj Touré, him and his solutionaries. So maybe you're ripping off Maj Touré, actually. Who? You don't know Maj Touré? Okay, we'll talk about that in the Patreon 15. Okay, sounds great. Uh, Jim asks, I've been meaning to catch this one for a while. He wants us to give his little podcast a shout out. It's called Ignore the Rant, a current event semi-political show from the perspective, this is very interesting to me, of an anarcho-libertarian recovering Bernie bro and an opinionated non-voter. My man. They, they rail against the media narrative and occasionally dip into conspiracy theories. I would just consider those more plausible narratives, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> Evidence of a conspiracy. That was the original conspiracy book. I think probably stands true to today. And with that, let us go to the patron 15. You can find your drive time news blast every weekday afternoon at thepropreport.com or your favorite podcasting platform in the Propaganda Report podcast feed. And if you want access to the extra content I was telling you about, go to patreon.com slash propaganda report and join up there. Make sure you look at the tiers and decide which you're most interested in. They're very clearly laid out. We will talk to you all tomorrow or in the patron 15. And as Binkley would say, have a fantastic rest of your day. <laughs>